there needs to be stretched if you want to paint on it completely flat. And although the heavier quality watercolour papers just bend a little bit and they're quite easy to paint on despite that, many artists much prefer to have a completely flat surface. And this is the traditional way that you do it. Right, all the materials you need are here in front of you. You've got some brown sticky paper, the watercolour paper itself, a pair of scissors to cut the brown sticky paper, some kitchen towel, some drawing pins which you may need, an old towel and some water and a, in this case a sponge brush, but any sort of sponge or cloth or brush will do. The drawing board that you're going to secure your watercolour paper to has to be a good, I would suggest a good half an inch or 12 millimetres thick. If you try and use masonite or hardboard which tends to be about a quarter of an inch thick, the, the strength of this paper as it dries and shrinks is such that it'll actually warp the hardboard into a bow shape. Which right, I've pre-cut four pieces of brown sticky paper, each of them a few inches longer than the width or the length of the uh, watercolour paper. And what we're going to do first of all is to thoroughly wet the watercolour paper in a sink or in a bath or if you happen to have a, a dish that's a little bit bigger than that then fine by all means do that. Put it into the water for no more than a minute. Now if you've ever pasted wallpaper you know that once you've pasted the length of, of uh, wallpaper you have to put it to one side so it can stretch and expand and that's exactly what you're doing with this. Right we've let the water soak into the paper for a minute or so and I've just tipped off, tipped it to one corner, let the excess water run into the, uh, the dish. Now what I've done here is laid out the towel on the drawing board just so that I can fold it over and give it a flying start by taking the excess water off. As you can see it really is an old towel but of course this is what you keep old towels for isn't it? Now I'm just going to bring that paper towel, that uh, towel over and just pat it lightly. Don't want to dry it completely and we'll now put the damp watercolour paper which is now hopefully thoroughly stretched and expanded roughly in the middle of the drawing board. And now what I'm going to do is to wet the brown sticky paper. Now I find by experience that you don't want to soak this paper because there's a danger with some of these brown papers that you actually start diluting and taking off the gum that's built onto it. And there we go. Just the last wipe over to make sure there's no gum sticking to anything, there's no excess water and make sure that that's stuck down properly. Right we'll come back to that in the morning and with a bit of luck it'll be bone dry and st stretched tight as a drum and a beautiful surface to paint on. Incidentally I mentioned drawing pins before, the reason for that is that some artists who find that they have they struggle with the paper pulling away from this brown paper covering uh, like to stick pins, a few pins perhaps every three or four inches, you don't have to go deep into the wood so it's through the brown paper and through the edge of the watercolour paper like that. Well here we are tomorrow morning and as you can see as predicted the paper has dried absolutely beautifully flat. There's a couple of little areas here I don't know if you can see where the, the brown paper has started pulling away from the board slightly. I've managed to wet the, uh, the areas that are affected and it hasn't affected the watercolour paper so we've got away with that. I must be honest though, stretching watercolour paper in this traditional method can be a little bit hit and miss, particularly if you're not used to the process. There are commercial paper stretchers on the market which do provide a very good alternative. Right, now here's an example of a commercial paper stretcher. They all work on basically the same principle of having some sort of clamping device around the edge so that when you place your, water, your wet watercolour paper on it, the clamps hold the watercolour paper tightly in place right along the full length and width of the, uh, of the edges and where, as the paper dries and shrinks it becomes absolutely taut. So in this case what happens is that you put your paper over, fold it over that 
groove that's all around the edge and then you tap in with a, uh, a mallet or a small hammer this rubber rod on top of the paper and you trap the paper in the groove and once it's tight and dry then you can paint on it immediately. Now do you remember me saying about the imperial sizes of paper? This is designed to take half imperial size paper and this is the same thing but in a smaller version which takes a quarter imperial size and here you can see exactly how it works where you've got the rods trapping the paper in the grooves and the great advantage of this type of device is that I wet that paper and stretched it only about 10 minutes ago so the moment you've got it clamped in place you can take a hairdryer to it and dry it off so it's ready for painting within 10 or 15 minutes of stretching the paper. Now I've had these paper stretches for about 10 years and they've never let me down once and I know other people who've got different uh, brands have said much the same thing. So you've got a simple choice. You've got the low cost brown sticky paper option which does work well once you get used to it or you can pay a bit of money out and you can buy a commercial paper stretcher which is reliable and does work and gives you your stretched, dry, workable watercolour paper in probably no more than 10 or 15 minutes.